and welcome to Young Explorers. So although we've been able to get back in the building for services, we won't be meeting as Young Explorers for a while. So we'll continue to come to you in this format. And what we'll be looking at today, continuing the Gospel of Mark, looking at where Jesus performs a miracle in regards to nature. But first off, we're going to start with a segment that we've called, What Do We Believe? In this segment, we're going to consider what is known as the breaking of bread. It's also called communion or the Lord's Supper. Now here at Woodside on a Sunday, we take bread and wine. And given that this is the first Sunday that we've been able to do so in a long while, I thought it important to consider what the breaking of bread means. It involves bread and wine, as you see before me, or in this case, grape juice. But it's more than just food and drink. And Jesus was the one who started it all off. Before Jesus was crucified, he had one final meal with his disciples. This meal was called Passover, and Jews had celebrated it for centuries. It commemorated the final plague on Egypt, when the firstborn of the Egyptians died, and the Israelites were spared because of the blood of a lamb that was sprinkled on their doorposts. When Jesus was at this meal with his disciples, he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. There are two important things that we should notice. The first is that Jesus is not saying that the bread is literally his body, but it's a symbol. A symbol that Jesus would give up his life as a sacrifice in the place of others. The second thing we should notice is that this is a command given by Jesus. We are to have this meal or this celebration to remember what Jesus has done. Just like we have birthdays or anniversary celebrations to remember special occasions or special events, Jesus wants us to have this meal to remind us of what he has done. Those words, do this in remembrance of me, are inscribed on this table. There was not just bread on the table, there was also wine, and Jesus did something with that too. He gave thanks and said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The cup is a reminder of the new agreement between God and mankind, that through faith in Jesus Christ, we can have our sins forgiven and can have peace with God. Jesus gave this command to take bread and wine together in remembrance of him, and Christians are still doing this today. We are Woodside when we do it. Each person takes a little bit of bread and a sip of wine. It's not about eating because we're hungry. The Lord's Supper is a remembrance of what Jesus has done for us and a celebration of what we receive as a result of his sacrifice. And Christians will continue to do this until Jesus returns. And that reminds us of the importance of meeting together and breaking bread. So in a moment we're going to turn to our Bibles. But first of all, I have a question. Have you ever been afraid? Have you been scared? Have you been terrified that you could die or something would really bad would happen to you? I remember once when I went skiing, that I, the place that I was skiing at was really high, really near the edge of some cliffs. And I was afraid at one point when I fell over that I could slide off the cliff and die. So I've had that experience. I wonder if you've had that experience as well. Because the people we're going to look at today had that experience. They were worried that they were going to die. Now if you remember from two weeks ago, I set you these questions. The first questions were, what were the three parables Jesus told? And remember the parables that we looked at were, uh, the lamp on a stand, the parable of the growing seed, 
and the parable of the mustard seed. And the second question that I asked you was, what was Jesus comparing the parables to? And that was the kingdom of God. He used those parables to talk about the kingdom of God. And so we're going to move on from there today. So if you have a Bible, you can turn to Mark um, chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verse 35 to 41. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and waves obey him. Now this is a well-known story that we have, of, or a well-known event, of Jesus here calming the storm. And here it is, Jesus performing um, a miracle. I wanted to spend a little time going through it. We see at the start of what we read that Jesus has had a hard day teaching. Remember the parables that we spoke about earlier. So he wanted some rest. He wanted to get away from the crowds. So he got into the, the boat with his disciples and they were sailing across the lake. And notice it wasn't just um, Jesus in the, uh, and his disciples there, but there were other boats with him. And what this reminds us of is the human nature of Jesus. Although he was divine, he was also human. He got tired like we do. He needed to sleep like we do. He needed to eat and other things as well. So while Jesus is also divine, he was also human. He struggled with the same things that you and I do as humans. But while they're sailing across in this boat, it says a violent squall came, or a really a big storm, such a big storm, that it's causing the boat to be knocked this way and that, and that water is coming on. Water is coming onto the boat. And how do you think the disciples are feeling at this point? Well, clearly they were worried that they were going to die. They were concerned that they would drown because the storm was so violent. So they're definitely feeling scared and terrified. But what's Jesus doing at this point? Well, because he's tired, he's sleeping on a cushion. And the disciples, they, don't, they can't understand why Jesus is doing this. You know, that while all this is going on, that this boat has been tossed this way and that, that Jesus is able to sleep. He's almost oblivious to what is going on. And so they wake up and ask Jesus, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? See, what they thought Jesus should be doing was he should be trying to help them, trying to save them from this storm. But Jesus would have been sleeping, one, because he was tired, but also because he was in control of this situation. He wasn't worried or concerned at all, because he knew exactly what was going to happen. And so the disciples accuse Jesus of not caring, because he's not doing anything. And how does Jesus respond? Well, we see it in verse 39. He says, He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the waves died down. So then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. So it says, Jesus got up and rebuked the wind. And that's, that means sort of to almost to uh, tell it off or to tell the wind to stop. It, essentially, Jesus had the power to say to the wind, uh, Stop, stop blowing then everything became completely calm. So try and picture that if you can. That you're in this boat that's been tossed this way and that, the waves are coming over, the water's coming into the boat, and then suddenly, at the words of Jesus, everything is calm. That was such an amazing and incredible situation to be in. But it reminds us, Jesus is in control of this situation. Even though to the disciples, 
It didn't seem that way. It's a reminder sometimes God is in control of things, even though it may not seem like it. That's to, directly related to the situation we're in regarding to the coronavirus. God is in control of everything that happens. And there's a reason that everything happens. Yet to us or to outsiders, it can seem like God is not in control. And that's uh, one of the reasons that Jesus says to the disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? He's telling them off. He's rebuking them for their lack of faith. Because they'd seen the miracles that Jesus had done when he'd been healing uh, those who were lame and those that were sick. So they knew that Jesus had power. And what Jesus wanted them to realise was not that he was just someone who'd been given power, but that he in fact had the same power as God. And so Jesus is kind of telling them off for not um, believing who Jesus is. But we see the reaction of the disciples. They were absolutely terrified, petrified now. Because on, on one point they were worried about the, the storm, that that was going to kill them. And now that they'd seen Jesus calm the storm, they were worried because of the terrified because of the power that Jesus had. You see, they realised, they understood, the only person who has the power to tell the wind to stop, to go, for the wind to go here or there, is God. Now today we know a lot about the weather, about when it's going to rain, about when it's going to sunny, be sunny. And most of the time, the weather forecasters get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. But no one is able to control the wind, or when it's sunny, or when it's rainy. But God is, he has that power. And the disciples were terrified, because part of them realised that essentially God was in their midst. The person who created the universe, the person who was able to tell the storm, be still was in their midst. So that's why they asked the question, who is this? Even the wind and waves obey them. They can't quite get their head around that this man here, Jesus, is able to calm the storms. But it's a reminder of the power that Jesus had. And it's a reminder of who he is, as we saw at the start. Yes, he is, has his human nature, but then there's also his divine nature, that he is in control of the wind and the rain. So what does this, in closing, what does this tell us about Jesus? It tells us that he had the power only God has. Another reminder, as we're going through um, this Gospel of Mark, I'm hoping you're seeing reminder after reminder after reminder of the power that Jesus had, a reminder that Jesus is God. And that's what this parable tells us. But what does this parable tell us about mankind, about human beings? Well, it tells us, it's a, a reminder sometimes how we often fail to fully trust in God. See, when things are going well and easy, we can say it's easy to trust God. But when things are not going so well, when there are storms, that's when sometimes our faith can become shaky. But it's a reminder that in every situation, God is in control. So thank you for uh, listening. I'm going to close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I uh, thank you, Lord, for this time we've been able to spend looking at your word, looking at the person uh, of Jesus, and looking at the power that he had even to calm the storm. And Heavenly Father, I pray you would help us to really understand what it is means who Jesus is, not just someone who is a good teacher, uh, but someone who points us to you. So Heavenly Father, I pray you keep us safe through the, the coming weeks, and we pray it's not too long before we're able to uh, meet again in person. So we ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, thank you for tuning in. Until next time.